So you're probably wondering why I keep wearing the same thing. You're probably thinking, oh, Colleen, what a slug. Well, yeah. I, I don't feel like doing laundry. And it's not that I wear this all the time. I mostly just wear it when I'm home. I think one of the keys, if you wear clothes for a while, is uh, make sure you get a bath or a shower. I do bathe. Big one, so yeah. So I'm not detecting any. I'm downwind. I'm not detecting <laughs> detecting this stuff. So, cool. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Angel, want some potato? Come over here, girl. So. We've been depressing ourselves by listening to the CBC. She says no, she doesn't want potato. All right, well, that's what I have here, so sorry. Yeah, exactly right. We've been letting them depress us Yeah. with their coverage of the news. And well, it, it's not there. And um, their lack of coverage of the yeah. real news. All it is is distractions from the real news, right? Which is COVID. Which is COVID. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're letting it go wild and basically like I went to the grocery store yesterday because James wanted to get fuel for his car yeah. and um, I usually do both at the same time right mm -hmm. so um, anyway and there were loads of people without masks now and at first I was like what is going on and then I remembered hearing on the CBC they were talking about how if you've had your two vaccinations, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. And I remember thinking, well, they won't be able to do any enforcement then. So the anti-vaxxers, whatever, whoever, they just won't be wearing a mask and nobody will know, right? And then I was thinking, well, you know, they won't be wearing a mask. And then they'll catch It'll, it. They'll catch it and whatever. And they'll It'll... deserve to die if they do, but uh, they'll be spreading it to other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, this is, like, whatever it, new thing is coming up with the, um, the new decisions that the politicians are making about COVID, James is like, it's, um, they're doing the exact wrong thing to try to control it. And it's like, if they're wanting to control it. Yeah. Like, but you have to assume that they're not. If there's so many times they they're doing the exact wrong thing to control it. How it's stupid like, can you be? Yeah. So they obviously want it to spread. It was obvious what you had to do before Australia ever did it. Mm -hmm. We were calling for it on this podcast, which was shut down international traffic all around the world, not just with China. But any place that would potentially not shut down in China? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much of my videos back then I posted because we were we were quarantining. We'll have to look. Yeah. But anyway, that's what we were saying. Yeah. But I don't know if we. I guess we still have the videos. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. But all we hear on the radio, there's. We listen to CBC, so that's publicly funded radio station. Yeah. And so we're hoping to get more actual information there, right? That's more reliable information, whatever, right? Because it's publicly funded. And so it it's even more of a downer when you hear nothing but ads or you hear the constant refrain of go out and spend money on restaurants or this and that and now what Pauline means by Matt ads they're not official ads mm -mm. they don't help to fray the cost of this stuff which no we bear the mm -hmm. not the brunt of it's all of it mm -hmm. so it's uh, here's blah blah blah's microbrewery having trouble mm -hmm. here's so and so put out an album they're from Calgary Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Basically, it's all publicly funded advertising mm -hmm. for specific groups. Like it's um, it's not all businesses, it's not all products, um, but no, a lot of it is uh, non -pro non profit stuff or artists yeah, or, yeah. but it not all the time. 
so today oh they uh, you know like uh, there's uh, put a lot of pepper on these you potatoes. know they're always talking about awards you know and I'm going mm -hmm. I keep waiting for a white uh, heterosexual male anglo-saxon to win win an award you know like mm -hmm. it's it's just they get shut out I don't think these war I mean these awards are Where my like no prizes too peppery? And, Maybe, for, on Marvel Comics or something like that. Only there, there are no prize, N O P E prizes. It's just, it's uh, basically a flunkies a, a ro using our money in many, many cases to reward uh, their friends and family and whatnot. And anyway, so not that long ago, we were listening to CBC and they did a show on, I think it was a call in show. On, oh, the noon hour college. On show, jingles. Yeah. We're like, what's oh. your favorite jingle? And so we're getting a way for them to get the public to advertise. For advertise. Business, right? Huh? And so. I'd like to teach the world to sing. What was that? Coca Cola or something like that? Pepsi? I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Yeah, there we are. But anyway. Um. Which I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to buy the world coke. I don't. Way. I'm not that impressed with the world, but no. you know, I'm not that down on I, the world. I don't want to feed them all that sugar. That's very cruel. Cool. And Lord knows what all else is in the stuff. Bad for the world. To yeah. eat. Don't drink coke. Divest yourself of your coke shares, Warren Buffett. You're basically <laughs> anyway. a good guy by comparison so, to almost then, any other capitalist out there. <laughs> Today, we listened to one where um, it was a show. What is that show called? I never catch that. Which show? The guy speaks really slowly. Uh, you mean Matt Galloway? Or? No, no. Anyway. That's as the the world churns? No, what is that one called? Anyway, The Current, maybe. That's Matt Galloway's, but yeah. it's not this guy's show. Okay. Well, this there's I, Tom Powers, a nice no, guy. That's I know. cute. That is not the one. And then the, there's a guy who stutters on whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. No, there's a guy whoa. who speaks really slowly. At what time of day, roughly? Well, we were just listening to it. Anyway, oh. so... Um, oh, I'm, that's a weekend show. Well, I a... heard it earlier this week, too, so it can't be a weekend show. Okay. Okay. So he... Um, what was he yapping about then? Well, he was talking about the... His thesis was the um, artist used the best songs or the most memorable, song, memorable songs they stick at the end oh, of the album. Oh, that thing, at the end of the album. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so James and I are thinking, okay, well, he's giving a few examples that are, yeah, those songs are memorable-ish or whatever, uh, but certainly not the best. Like, he didn't even come up with very good songs, except for one. One was the, um, the Beatles song. Oh but yeah, anyway. uh, Sergeant Pepper's. Yeah. Uh, but besides day that, his picks, they, he didn't do very. Like Rolling Stones, um, you can't always get what you want. Is yeah. at the end, and that's it's not the end as of good Let, as the Blood and the album. There's all but, sorts of songs on that album that are better than that. Mm -hmm. Live with me. So uh, what is that one? Um, but something like that. Uh, Monk, I'm a monkey man. I'm glad you're really a monkey matter. man too. So anyway. The guys, I'm listening to the rest of the thing and I'm like, okay, well, I'd like to agree with his thesis and then I get to see, oh, this is why he's made the show. So, um, I seem to remember that Rolling Stones song had been used for an ad, but I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't tell I can't you remember what, what it was. It might have been, been a couple of ads. Yeah. And then he, um, he, what was it? What song? Anyway, he did the Beatles song and he showed, he segued that into how that last bit of the, the song, excuse me, had been used for a, an ad for... A day in the life? Some, yeah, I guess the last bit inspired some company to make that their, I don't know, I think it was a television company or maybe a movie company. I don't care. Anyway, and then he ends with, when you eat your Smarties, do you eat the red ones last? 
Wow. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. You saw through that. Yeah, I saw through it. Mm -hmm. Because I listen. I'm a listener. Mm -hmm. And I'm always listening for what is the real story mm -hmm. behind things. Because the aggressive propagandists. Yeah, bad people. They, they're just, they give you a little bit of truth. Just to reel you in. Yeah. And then there's the lie. Right? Yeah. And so um, you got to listen for it. So you there's a lot of them it. on the right wing, you know, like uh, the Franklin Grahams and the Billy Grahams of this world. The Joel Osteens or Osteen or whatever his name is. The guy's just a hairstyle, really. Um, but there are plenty of, of faux gauches, uh, false uh, left wingers mm -hmm. out there who are involved in a lot of faux gaucherie. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a stunning number of them. They existed before the 60s, but that's when they really took off. And they are in their element right now. Because there's three generations of them. Plugging away the 60s folks, some of them haven't retired. And then you got the 90s folks, and now you got the 20s folks. It's a generational thing. Yeah. And uh, they're just full of lies. Mm -hmm. Full of lies and misrepresentations. But I'm amazed. You know, my sister, I was talking to her, and apparently they were just, um, her and her husband were driving back from, um, one of her sons had a grad. And I thought, how stupid, you know? Well, he's a nice guy, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's the, it's uh, the responsibility of the school. We the government, but the school to well, say, we can do it, but we're not going to do it. I don't know why grad is so important. I haven't, I have never went to any of my grads. See, you know, there's a big difference in age between Paul and me, Pauline and me. But uh, there are so many ways we are similar. I've never been to a grad. It's not as though we consulted about it, you know, like we'll never go to a grad. I can't see any point now. They should have done an online grad. A Zoom thing or whatever. Anyway. But it's funny how people make such a big deal out of things. Like, who cares? Weddings. We didn't have an actual wedding. Well, uh, we, we might have had one, but, you know, we couldn't afford it. And I was... What do you think? I hadn't even gone through my stem cell therapy. I don't even understand the, the whole point I was technically to still terminal, terminal right then. What's that? What was that? I haven't... I have never understood the point to ceremony. Well, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> me too. I mean, I was raised in a very strict religion. It was... Uh, more Baptist than Baptist, really. All other things being equal... We'd go to uh, ceremonies three times a week. Once on Wednesday evening, twice on Sunday, if you can imagine it. So we used to live 20 miles south of town here. It would be roughly 30 kilometers. We'd come in twice on Sunday. Unless the weather was really, really, really bad. This tomato's a lot better than the last one. It's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway. I couldn't stand the ceremonies, except I kind of like the singing, although I got to admit the songs that they were using, this is a very Protestant kind of church, the songs they were using were pretty stupid. Mm. There was a lot of inversion in the lyrics. We should write some good, was, uh, uh, good uh, songs for Christians to sing. Yeah, there we go. Um, they had writers like Fanny J. Crosby or something like that. I love that name, Fanny. Make sure it for Francis. It means so many other things nowadays. Anyway. Some dreary things. I like some of the tunes. I... I didn't say I like armored Christian soldiers. It's kind of a... 
arousing to me. But uh, there's one that st started, On Jordan's stormy banks I stand, And cast a wishful eye, On Canaan's fair and happy land, Where my possessions lie. And then, We'll rest in a very happy land by and by. You know, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of um, composed. You know, it's, it's just not uh, flat. I used to like that one. First time I heard that one. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been that would have been somewhere between eight and ten years old, right? I'm going. Yeah, that one's a little cut a cut above. Just musically, I don't know about the whole lyrics or whatever. So that, the last time I would have heard that at the latest would have been 1971, somewhere around there, maybe early 72. So oh, that's like 50 not... years ago, but some of this stuff sticks, right? Yeah. I mean, I almost got the tune, as close as I can render it. We're to. not encouraging people to go to church. Oh, for Pete's if sake, you don't, are a don't Christian, encourage, don't go do not meet at it. church right now. It's a pandemic. Yeah, it's a and, pandemic. Don't meet. You, you can are, do it online right. if you really have to. When you die of COVID, you're not going to heaven. Jesus is going to just it's meet you at like the pearly how, gates. Well, he's going how to send many Peter other people say, did you send to heaven? Mm -hmm. like, you awful person. You're a sinner. You didn't obey the law. Here's what Jesus said. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. God. Yeah, I, but right now, I think they would be obeying the law. Who? People who are meeting at church, because now if they've had two vaccinations, they're well, only maybe. at most 95% covered. But there have been all sorts of people who have been breaking it, yeah. and they would be going to hell. Mm. They're breaking the law. When you break the law, I don't care. And that's at most. It's awful. Right now there's the Delta going around. They don't know how much coverage you get off of your shot. Even with Delta. two, I don't think they know for yeah. certain. So... Uh, and there's more stuff coming down the pike, even yeah, as we speak. Exactly. If you're out there spreading it, you're creating new variants. Well, there you go. You're part of the problem. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in the Bible, Jesus taught people how to talk to God. You don't need a middleman. That's what Jesus was saying. Yeah, that's what the Lord's, the Lord's Prayer is prayer. about. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the disciples come to him and say, teach us how to pray, and he does. No, I Our Father who art in heaven, you know, like you learned it in school if you're old enough. Well, I don't know if I remember it. I could try. Mm -hmm. I could try for you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Don't bother. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, what's the next one? Lead us not. No, it's something in lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Oh, lead us not, now. and deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And seculum seculorum, maybe is what it is in the Latin. Hmm. Forever and ever. Well, I don't know Latin, so I yeah, don't exactly. know that. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't it be great to be able to just recite that in Latin? Well, I don't think Jesus would have taught his people in Latin, so... I don't think he taught them in Greek. I think he was speaking Aramaic. The uh, so New Testament was written in Greek. So you'd have to actually learn so Aramaic to say the Lord's Prayer properly, I think. Yeah. yeah. But maybe they were yipping and yapping Greek. I just don't see it. I mean, the guys that he was dealing with weren't uh, exactly peasants, so far as I know. Mm. I mean, one of them was a zealot, which means he was a nationalist, I gather. Mm -hmm. And one was a tax collector. Well, that's not a peasant. No. Four of them, at least, were fishermen. Mm. You know, fishermen would have to sell their wares, I think, or whatever. They're kind of like business guys, along mm -hmm. with whatever. You know, peasants. He himself wasn't the son of a peasant, he was the son of a carpenter. Everyone thinks that's such a lowly task. Back then, it would have been a skilled or semi-skilled job. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, Joseph, his dad, was out there, you know, selling his skills. You know, I doubt if he had a little shop front or whatever. But.
I can't remember all, you know, like uh, the guy who kept the money bags, controlled the purse strings. He must have had some weight. Maybe he was uh, literate, at least uh, numerate or something like that. That was Judas Iscariot. Hmm. Well, that didn't work out. I think the Bible suggests uh, that was his real motivation. And, uh, of course, he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Hmm. He did feel remorse. Um, he committed suicide. Hung himself. Angel. And the Heckledama. See? That's uh, something like the field of blood. Hmm. Dama would be blood. Hmm. In the construct state, I think. A Semitic grammatical feature. And yeah, I have studied Hebrew. I don't know if that's Hebrew or Aramaic. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. Hmm. Heckle kind of sounds like palace. Um, Heckle is uh, palace, and they didn't realize it until they they deciphered Akkadian. Hmm. And then from there, deciphered Sumerian. It comes from Sumerian. A, A Gaul. Gaul means big. Mm. A means house. Mm. Just means big house. See how that would be palace? Mm. Pretty yeah. awesome. I kind of like that. So it's not just that. Like the the name for the Lord is actually Ia. You can see how there's an H in front of uh, Heckel? Mm. Mm. Palace? Mm. I don't know if it was in the original Samaritan. See, the original Samaritan is just E. Mm. Hey. The Sumerian did, didn't write these things in the H's out. Mm. Huh? I don't think they wrote Y's and W's. Mm. Oh. So, uh, you look at Yahweh, you take the Y off. You take the, uh, or Jehovah's better, and I'll leave the O out of the middle. You take the Y off, they take the H off, you take the W off, you take the H off, you've got oh, E. -a. <laughs> and that what that means is E, that's house, and I think Ah means water, house of water, Samaritan. So that's the original for uh, for uh, Jehovah or Yahweh, and the original for uh, Elohim, which is not a plural. I'm sorry, is Akkadian, and the way the Akkadians would write, he, he was a god for the Assyrians and uh, probably for the Babylonians as well. Im. Darling. So what they're writing out is the god Im, and it would be Elohim. Mm -hmm. And uh, the H should be in there like Allah, right? Allah. And so it would be Elohim, Elohim. So there you go. That's Elohim is really the Akkadian god Im from Mesopotamia. And Jehovah is the Sumerian god Ea, mm -hmm. again from Mesopotamia. So uh, you're looking at the person who discovered that independently. I might not have been the first to discover it. You know, there, who knows who's uh, lurking around in the weeds there if you're watching. You know, like, I didn't steal your stuff. Uh, it's just great minds or not so inferior minds uh, think alike. You know? So, there you go. D don't steal that and give me some credit, okay? Mm. But, uh, yeah, just that guy that you can't stand on the, <laughs> on the internet because I'm too true to be good mm -hmm. not too good to be true too true to be good and weeping and gnashing your teeth at uh, the truth that I'm telling but there we go yeah. too true to be good <laughs>